my name is Jonathan Geary. I am here to show you how I myself as a freelance graphic designer and web developer and designer learned my skills. Um, I didn't go to school for anything I know how to do. I, I've learned everything on my own, which is both good and bad with, for other reasons. That'll be in a different, different video though. And um, I'm, I'm just going to show you what I did to move from barely knowing anything to learning almost everything. Along with everything else, you always have to start from the bottom up. You're not going to know something right off the bat. And that's that's obviously where practice comes in. You have to really practice. You're not going to, after this video, you aren't going to be like, oh my gosh, I can... I could do everything he does. No, that's not the case. You still have to practice. It just takes time and a real under understanding for what you're doing. So let's dive in. We are first going to um, approach um, other graphic, other online graphic design communities. I've gone through a couple in, you know, obviously in my many years of doing this, um, so there, there are quite a bit out there. I'm just gonna see if I can find anything searching graphic design communities. And looks like, let's see if see what this one does. Not quite what I'm looking for. Um, there is one that, that comes to mind. It's called Planet Renders. And according to communities like Planet Renders, I think it's not net. Um, yeah. It, it changed quite a bit since I was last on here. It's been a couple of years. But these are what renders are, and I'll get to that in a minute. At Planet Renders, there's the forms. And you would first introduce yourself. Uh, that's what I would do every single time I started a new community or form uh, for graphic design. Um, I uh, would always post here first to kind of get in touch with the community and really be part of the community. Um, and then uh, down here, there's Design Talk. You can talk about what you're lacking or what what other people think would be best when you're trying to make certain designs. Um, graphic critique, show off your SIGs, there's that term again, SIGs, it's um, also known as tags. It's what people use to graphically show their interest or their, um, their fan art in their own artistic way through their graphic design skills or even f through a friend. It's called gifting. Um, so you can go here to show off and ask people to critique your um, your creations. Um, tutorials, free resources, and then graphic battles is where you really get to um, compare your skills with someone else. Now, that may be very, I want to say, degrading for your skills in some ways, but in other ways it's actually really good because you know where you stand in the in the game as far as even just this forum. You can go to mul multiple other forums and they're going to tell you, and, and the battles are really going to tell you where you're at. But another thing is, is it actually doesn't really matter. What really matters, the bottom line is, you create what you create. People are going to like and dislike your work no matter what. Okay? Um, so even if you, like, are really good at something, some people are going to say, I don't like it. Okay? I get that a lot. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't seem to like what I do sometimes. And that's fine. I create stuff in a certain way, and so do you. So... With that said, battles are for you to put it out there and go, okay, what are they going to say about my work? What am I going to be ranked as in this community? But 
it does and it doesn't depend on your skill. It, it really depends on the people you're dealing with because even if you go to another forum or community and you post, some people are just going to give you crap just because they can. They really don't care. And that's, I guess that's fine, but um, you aren't going to get the critique you need doing or, or posting on those kind of forms. So please be careful with that. Alright, so there's that, planetrenders.net, and if there are any others, I'll post it in the description. For the next category, we are going to do finding high quality designs and studying them. So let's just go to Google and search um, award winning graphic design. That's a great way to get to the, get, you know, designs from the top of the top of the top and really study what it is they are doing for you to get up to that skill. So 25 graphic designs, um, I don't know if this would be a good one. Or maybe even just graphic design because if you're gonna, see this is, this is kind of what you're looking for here. Kind of. But even then I can tell you that that isn't very well done. It's, it's stuff like this this and this this is kind of the same thing as that and this and even this and this all these different designs mm, that's okay it doesn't really have a good flow though in my opinion um, and e even this like this is stuff that I love um, we're going a little too overboard with this thing right here but um, I really like that and even built in with photography. Obviously, they didn't, didn't create graphic stuff with that, but this this is technically graphic design because design is putting things together. So, and even this, like, this is sick. This is awesome. This is the kind of thing you want to learn how to do with graphic design. Um, so, um, so what you got to do is study what they're doing here. So let's go back to the top. Look at this one. What they're basically trying to do is create a focal point and attraction to their graphic design. So with the lights that you see here, these light um, strings, I guess, that creates a focal point. The first place that I looked was here and here because it has has that flow. Um, with, the, with the way they've created this, the flow kind of goes from down here up like this and around. The reason why they did that, it gives it that flow. But if you were to do renders, which is what we'll talk about next, if you were to look at renders, you have to kind of build your own flow, which is where the creative comes from. So, and then this. This is at an angle, so what they did is they put graphics in that flow of that angle. So they, 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 they went around like this to kind of support that angle, and they also made these the graphics that go in that direction to support that angle as well. So that is considered flow. Um, let's see if I can find a good one for focal points. This one is kind of has a negative focal point because it, it nowhere else really has a black area except the face and the hand. And that gives like a kind of a pop of you like, oh, that's the first thing you notice. Because it doesn't have any really big light structures or areas. <clears throat> so that's going to be the first thing you notice. Um, this kind of graphic design really ties in with website design as well because it shows information in, in a way that gives the viewer ease. And the only time you really view information is on the web or on a poster or business cards like this. And when you are showing information or showing like a logo or anything, you the key is is to give it enough space. You have to really get a feel for how much space you're giving the edges and the information in between. So if this if this business card was all crunched up and the information was right along the edge, it would not look as appealing, not at all. So it's really depending on space. You need to get used to where people place things, how far they place them away, if they don't place them too far, if they place them just enough, and stuff like that. See, even here, spacing is a big deal. 
and then the design obviously goes off the page but that's that's the idea he wants to give it a an edgy design I don't know if my terminology is going out of whack but whatever what the three key points you want to really get out here is um, flow focal points and spacing if you learn those three things and learn how to really master those three things there's not much you can't do another thing on the list that I just remembered is obviously your artistic value you need to learn how to be very creative and use all these different tools and all these different ways to make things move in a certain way make things look a certain way and that's that's also a big deal okay so next we are going to go to rendering images now rendering images is a tedious tedious job um, so let's say we wanted to make a tag or a sig um, I apologize if I didn't mention what the definition of tags or sigs are um, but I believe I did it was you know th the graphic um, basically rectangles or squares that show your artistic skill um, when you're posting on forms it'll show right below your message which kinda gives you that that sig that signature or you know, feeling and and it also is known as a tag because you know you're uh, creating a small graphic signature so it kinda ties in this you know in a similar way <coughs> um, next obviously like I said is rendering images and let's say I wanted to create a tag of Iron Man so let's do that let's just put an Iron Man and we come up with all these images all these images either have a background or they're blurry or they're used in something else and the deal is is that you want to be able to take that graphic object from an image and be able to use that in your own tag or in your own graphic piece so let's look at this one. This is a pretty high quality piece and I might be able to get it or I might not. I don't know. Let's take a look. Yep. Alright, so this is obviously an image that has a lot going on. Um, let's go back to planet renders. I'm going to show you what they do here. Let's pick a good one. Or relatively modest one here. Um, well, this is all right, be all right. So basically, what this is is an image that has a transparent background. You'd be able to use this anywhere in your tag, which is good because it's very smooth and it's very. Um, it's almost like somebody had rendered it for you and just created the item itself for you to use wherever you want. I think that's why it's called a render, but um, but yeah, it has a transparent background, um, which is good. So with this, let's say we wanted to use, you know, Iron Man himself. Not necessarily these guys, these other dudes, or these other drones. I think they are, um, and we just wanted to use Iron Man and create a graphic flow and items around him. Um, we would have to go in, so copy the image or copy the image URL. Um, I use GIMP, I don't use Photoshop, so let's go into GIMP. There we go. Alright, so now we have it. So what? So you really need to get used to and familiar with the pen tool if you're going to be doing any rendering, or cutting out objects or images or anything. Um, it's similar to, I, mean, I, I, I really know how to use the pen tool in um, GIMP, it's also known as the paths tool, but in Photoshop it's called pen tool. And what you do is you click and drag, and it creates a formed line um, with a certain dynamic flow. So if I were to put another one down here, it would give it an edge because of these right here. If I were to put it out more, obviously it changes the edge. Um, so you basically get to create a flow, flowed line, not a, a jagged line, but a flowed line. And here with this, you can create pretty much 
any object you want. You can't do that with a free hand tool. You could try, but it'll be very edgy. See? Look at that. It's choppy. But here, you have a smooth line, which is what you want. Um, but with that, you're going to want to go around all these objects. Let's start here. Go around the edge of the object. And do your best to keep the quality of the edges. Stay on the edge of the object without selecting the edge outside or also known as negative space. I'm just going to do a little bit here. Show you what I mean here. Meh. Okay. I used to do this all the time because there are things that I wanted to use um, but they, did, they didn't have a render for them. Like certain girls I wanted to use as a signature um, certain anime characters and whatnot that I wanted to use, but they weren't in the library in Planet Renders or anywhere else, so I had to make it myself. So I really learned how to use this tool. So let's just go from there over to here. And just do this. Yeah, that works. Okay, so basically what I have is I've basically rendered or edged out this whole space here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. I'm, hit, I'm hitting control C right now. If you obviously can't see that, but um, or you could go to file be slow about it, file, or not file, edit and copy, and then go to a new layer, I'll just, new layer, or make a new layer, which is where, where, you, where you hit here, and name your layer, or don't, which is fine, just do this, hit new and hit enter, or the reason why this object is because that's what I used to name it before, and then you paste it, which is control V, or obviously edit and paste. And I may have tried to copy it when it was in an empty layer, so let's try that again. Nope, there we go. There is your rendered object. As you can see, it just shows the object. You don't know if there's a background here. Let's add white in the background. See? I mean, you can see a little bit here, which you could go in and fine tune that like this. Oops. Wrong tool. Go in and fine tune it like this. And then. Delete. <laughs> Wrong layer again. And again. There we go. And that way it doesn't have that dark edge like it was cut out from something. It looks like an actual object in in the design. So, that's how you would render. I'm not going to do the whole thing, obviously, because that would take so long. Um, but that is how you render. Okay, and you just practice that until you get really good at it. Um, if you have any other comments or questions about rendering just go ahead and hit me up in the comment section below and I will show you how to do certain things like this hair up here is going to be crazy to try and edit so you may need to do a certain technique for that and, and uh, I can show you how to do that if you really want to know but if you know how to do it then you're all set next is layer modes so let's say I just use this image anyways for a render, so or a, for a tag, tags. I like my tags as 150 to 300 or 350. Well, the opposite of that. I'm switched. So like that. 
and then what I do is I paste it in a new layer so I'll just call it render to say if it was a render resize it to the size I'd like and place it in a very designed way so make it look kinda cool like that And then, voila. I'm going to sharpen it a little bit though because it looks a little blurry from the resize. Hands sharpen. And sharpen that baby up. There you go. Alright. So now, what you want to do is try to find textures like galaxies or clouds or um, anything else for that matter, like lights, um, that will give a good texture to your tag. There we go. Something like this that doesn't has, has quite a bit of negative space so that way you can utilize the negative space to your own advantage when you're doing your tag. So um, when you paste this onto a new layer you don't want it to look like that. Even when you start cutting things out, you don't want um, the image itself to be showing. You want it to be in with the design. It's quite a big image here. So right now I'm just changing the opacity to see where it sits. And I think that's about right right there um, but you don't want it to be like that obviously and you don't want you to just erase things and try to make it work the best kind of like that I mean that's that's fine but it does not look as great as you would if you did something like this obviously I mean look at it <laughs> it's so much better if you use these layer modes up here mode Burnt. you have so many options and you can always just toy with um, these right here. I'm going to do the clone tool, hit control to set my spot for cloning, and then just write these out, and then smudge. And there's that. Obviously there's some light up in here that we just don't want. So smudge it a little bit, kind of give it more of a blend. No, I don't want to touch that because that's something I want there. There you go. And I also probably don't want this or this. Just want to uh, show. the shine here. See, look at that. It already has shine, but we don't want to take away from that. We want it to kind of give it a, a powerful look. Even if I don't use the stars themselves, the texture gives it that more um, kind of like an almost ready to explode look, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I like it. And I apologize if I'm going a little too fast, but that's the way I like it. Anyway, that's one way to do it. And even with um, with um, these renders here, or just adding artistic things like artistic and then cubism, that could even give you some value to your signature or your tag. See, that screen looks kind of cool, to be honest. Kind of like that. It kind of gives edgy, edgy um, spots, which I like. But it's really up to you artistically to do what you want with it. This is already a really cool image, so trying to 
um, add effects to it is going to be either really hard to do or really, really cool. So I'm just going to do one more, like a lightning strike. That's one thing that might turn out awesome if you use it the right way. That looks kind of cool. Let's leave it down this way so I can cut that off and it won't be noticeable. Sorry, oop, my bad. Mm. All right, let's sharpen this up while it's still. And another another tip: you always want to sharpen things while it has objects or pixels around it because we won't be able to sharpen it unless there's something around it. So if I were to render an image and try to sharpen the outside edge, it wouldn't work. So you need to make sure you sharpen before you, you crop or anything. So, or cut off or render or whatever. Um, so let's just sharpen this real quick. There we go. Now change the mode. That looks pretty sick. But we obviously want to give it depth, so I'm going to need to erase this, this. And still give it that. Now we're going to want to erase this down here, because that's what I wanted to do. And, and then with that, you can add in, let's actually change the color of this. Make sure we get the right color. There we go. Alright, now, that's still a little green, let's try that again. some of this color to kind of try to find the right color here. That'll do. To give it a glowy feel. Let's but now, as you can see, all the stuff is yellow and we don't want that. All we want is the lightning, the blue lightning. Okay, now what we can do is we can give his face a little more glow. We can put it anywhere else we want to. So let's go to a smaller sized brush and touch up. I always want to use Gaussian blur because um, Gaussian, I don't know what, how you even say that word, to control how much blur you actually give the object. Let's actually use a mode for this too. There we go. So now, the 
his chin has a little bit more blur and his eyes a little more shine anyway that's just a couple things you can do to a tag and um, you can add some text maybe let's just do that real quick just for fun Iron Man that's definitely not the text we want to use but that's usually don't want to use text in your um, tags because it distracts from the artistic value but I'm just gonna do it in here just to be fun so outline and with the cool thing with GIMP is you can really adjust selection so you can even grow the selection one to give it an outline which is cool I like that And then uh, one other really cool thing is you can alpha, like alpha select, or basically select all the pixels in one layer with this. You right click a layer and alpha to selection. And it will select every little pixel, no matter where it is, no matter what opacity it has. And it will select it. So that, do that and then shade. And then go to the gradient tool and select FG which is foreground color to transparency and give it a little bit of edge. This needs to be above. There we go. And there you go. Iron Man. Alright, so that's it. I don't need that. Um, so there goes layer modes. I already told you about tags and I'm actually going to design a whole um, tag in my next video to show you how I do it. I have not I have not designed a tag in a while, so it may be a crappy tag, but um, we'll have to see. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is probably a very long video, and I apologize, but I appreciate if you watched all the way through. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. I will definitely, definitely be posting more YouTube videos later um, after I get the equipment I need. But um, for now, this is all I can do. Um, but yeah, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you appreciate it. I will see you or talk to you in the next video. See you later. Bye.